What's going on guys? K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an awesome day today. Hope you enjoyed your holiday weekend. I know I haven't had a chance to upload videos. I've been traveling all over the place. It's been hectic and really not much has really happened with the price, let's be honest. But there is something that I have to bring to you right now that not a lot of people are talking about. They seem to be ignoring this. Now you're hearing lots of bearishness. Stocks are topping out. Bitcoin's gonna fall below 20K all the way down to uh, 10,000. I heard somebody even say a one thousand six hundred dollar bitcoin i'm not even kidding i've heard that prediction so are we being a little bit too optimistic should we brace ourselves for this impact well i want to show you some data today that may actually change your mind we have to follow exactly what is happening on these heat maps what the whales are doing in the background and also the fact that bitcoin although it is different this time a little bit it's actually showing very historically repetitive patterns, right? So I do want to talk about the fact that the month of September is generally speaking a bearish month for Bitcoin. Will we have the same thing happen? Should we be worried? Uh, we're not really going to talk about the ETFs today. We'll talk about that tomorrow or something. But I just want you guys to pay attention and understand that we may have ended that distribution phase and the accumulation phase may have already started and no one is paying attention. So if that sounds good to you, I'm going to keep today's video a little bit short because uh, it's hard to upload at these places. So I'm just going to give you a little bit update of what's going on. If you like these quick updates, you know, drop a like down below. Uh, and yeah, let's hop right into the charts. So obviously Bitcoin basically remains flat. We could see right here that we're actually sitting below this area, right? We had all of this area of sideways. We had the Bart Simpson fake out and now we're sitting below it. So a lot of people are, you know, talking about this doom and gloom. We also have seen for the first time ever after flipping out of this red into the neutral that Bitcoin actually is sitting below the ribbon. And at the exact same time, we've also never seen the EMA ribbon flipping bullish only then to flip down into bearish territory. That would be the first time that we've ever seen that. And obviously we know that when Bitcoin does tend to flip, over on this ribbon, we have massive, massive sell-offs. You can see right here from the flip, Bitcoin fell down about 63%. If we go back even farther, this right here was about a, no, this was a 50% drop. I remember that uh, very specifically. And then of course we have the black swan COVID. So it does look like doom and gloom, right? And it does seem like all of these people who are screaming for lower lows are maybe going to possibly be correct. Well, if we have a look at really what Bitcoin is doing, yes, we did break this upward sloping trend. And this is why most of the analysts are saying, oh, that's it. We lost the uptrend it's over. Well, we technically did not lose the uptrend officially, right? We still have this right here putting in higher levels. Yes, we are sitting below the 200 daily, which isn't a good thing. But again, we have still tested this Terra Luna one, two, right? Three, four. You could even argue really five right here. There was a little bit of consolidation and then six times. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to build that structure, build that base the same way that we built it up, uh, up in this area, right around this 30k level we're also trying to build it down here so this is very good for structure and just to point something out yes we did lose the uptrend but i have to give a shout out to the crypto professor again pointing out the fact that when we had the covid crash we actually had a very similar situation right look at this right here we were having this uptrend perfect uptrend perfect uptrend perfect uptrend and then we lost the uptrend so then a lot of people were screaming, that's it. We're coming all the way down to these levels. We're coming all the way down to $4,000 Bitcoin. But again, what happened was we were building this structure right here and that's exactly where Bitcoin bounced. And you could see right here, we're doing the same exact thing, right? We broke that structure, we came down and look, we're building that structure again. So I'm not saying that, you know, Bitcoin's ready to just go to 100K right now. But what I am saying is that we are still maintaining this trend. We're holding above the 50. We're also on this, uh, this very small trend. If we take the Terra Luna uh, wick right here, and just simply draw a line out. You could see that, yeah, we had a couple fake outs below it. Obviously, we had this huge double bottom fake out below it, but that also offered the best opportunity to buy. So again, until we start really losing some of these key, key major levels, it's really difficult to say that this isn't in a bull run. I mean, look at this, up over 100%, right? And currently, even at the, the prices that we're at right now, Bitcoin is still up about 70% from the bottom. So 70% is not a bull trap. 70% is not a fake out. I don't know what, where these people are coming up with this idea. You know, yes, historically speaking, September is a bad month, but like Rect Capital pointed out, it's a bad month, but it's actually just a very neutral month. You're not seeing these deep, dark reds. You're not seeing these bright, bright greens. You're just seeing very minimal. You know, you're looking somewhere between potentially, you know, two, uh, you know, a, a, a negative 
five percent. I mean, this was a bad, bad one right here, twenty and thirteen. But really, you could see that, as he says, the likely retra retrace is between seven and thirteen percent, which really isn't that much if you have a look at Bitcoin. Also, again, people saying that you know the stock market rally is a fake out, whatever. Again, guys, th I mean, this is what is this off the bottom right here? Just out of curiosity, right? Uh, bottom to where we are right now, twenty eight percent to the top is thirty one. So, I mean, th this is literally almost at the same top again. Now, are we forming a double top? Well, we don't have confirmation on that just yet, but we are still in this parallel channel and we are still continuing to the upside. So even if the stocks wanted to take another breather, you know, down to this area, fake everybody out below that sort of 4,300, I still think that we would be putting in higher lows and higher highs. Again, until we start breaking structure, you cannot start calling for these crazy $10,000 Bitcoin. I mean, could it happen? Of course, sure, anything can happen, but you can't say that based on what we're looking at. It's a lot of people that I think they just want that attention. They want to just say these outrageous levels, you know, and, and, and maybe they maybe they hope that they're right. And then if they are, they get to be the heroes and saviors that, you know, had warned everybody. But ultimately speaking, once we get these crossovers on the 20 and the 50 EMA, generally speaking, we end up going up for quite a long time, right? And, and you could see historically this plays out all the time. And right now that is what we're doing. Now, yes, again, you could say, oh, well, this was bearish. This was bearish because we had a retest and we fell down. Yeah, but again, we're still putting in that supportive structure right? So it is not officially broken yet. I would have to say that if we were going to break this and we were going to retest, truthfully, I would just look at the VPVR. Quite simply, the next area is around $23,120. Why couldn't we go down to that level? What is that from here? It's nothing, guys. That's a It's a 10% it's a draw, 10% dip, right? So based on the average that we had from wrecked capital over here, uh, wrong, uh, wrong one. Sorry. Basically saying seven to 13%. Okay. Well, if you think we're going to go down 13%, where would that take us from this point? Just out of curiosity. Well, we've already had the breakdown, but you want to take it from the actual month itself. All right, let's go. So we have the open from here. Uh, we're going to have a bad month. We're going to come down about 13%. Where does that bring us? It still only brings us down to about $22,000. And like I said, looking at this VPVR right here, you could just see the amount of interest down around this $20,000 level. I just can't imagine breaking this seven year structure, uh, you know, that we have all down here. Uh, this is, it's, you know, it's just, I'm not, I'm not seeing that guys. And if you are a doom and gloomer, we've already had multiple tests of the Bitcoin balance price, which every single time we do that, it is a generational buy opportunity down here, right? Right here, right here. We had one retest that this is the COVID crash. So again, you know, just kind of zooming in right here, we've already had our tests. We've already had our multiple tests right here. And you might be saying, oh, well, it's sloping down. Yeah, well, it was sloping down here as well, guys. Keep in mind, these are averages. They are lagging indicators. But what everybody's worried about is this little guy right here. They're worried that the DXY is just going to start pumping. We're going to come all the way back up here and everything is just going to start crashing. Now, maybe we do get a short-term pump. Maybe maybe that is what we get. But let's be real, guys. We know that they're going to most likely be pausing the rates in 2024. And at some point, they're going to have to turn back on that money printer. Oh, and if you want to just have a look at what's going on in the background with these whales and these heat maps right here. So you could see obviously down here in the red when we're zero, that's not not very much, right? And then as we get up to blue, blue is like full on. Everybody's crazy. They're going nuts for it, right? And you could see like James Stratton pointed out, Bitcoin distribution appears to be behind us. We can see an uptick in this accumulation. This is the most aggressive accumulation since June, July for for whales that have over 10 Bitcoin. And we've also seen the highest amount of number of whales holding 10 Bitcoin. So again, I'm trying to understand where this bearish sentiment is coming from. Just to kind of throw it out there, guys, you know, we, we've seen things like this in the media before. Does anybody remember when Ellen DeGeneres in February of 2018 uh, was basically saying that she would rather own a goat than Bitcoin? When you bought it, it was worth $10,000, okay? And then for some reason, Bitcoin becomes worth $20,000. You just doubled your money. Personally, I'd rather own a baby goat. That's my, <laughs> but that's just me. Obviously, I don't want to play that entire clip because I'm definitely sure Ellen will give me a copyright strike because I just feel like that's how it would be. But you can see right here, here's exactly where she bought at this level, right? You can see right back here, here's the date, here's the level. And if we just draw this out to where the price is right now, that is a 175% increase. Now, yes, it, the price did go down after Ellen had put that out. But my point is, it's still up 175%. And you might be saying, well, 175%, that's nothing, right? Who cares about 175%? I can make 10x, 
20X, 30X. Yeah, but you're not gonna make that in a bank. You're not gonna make that sitting in fiat. So if you had left your money in the bank since Ellen had put that out, you missed out on your money appreciating 175%. I know it's hard to get this 10X, 20X, 100X mentality out of your head, but 175% increase is still not bad. It's better than anything you're gonna get in the traditional uh, tra uh, traditional finance, right? And like Raul Powell was arguing, he says that the 2024 presidential election is only going to deepen the country's societal issues, especially with deep fakes, AI, etc. 2024 is a year where the Fed will print more money and the government will hand out more stimulus to bribe the voters, which leads to yet more printing down the line and the people will get poorer and poorer and poorer and despair will keep rising. And he says he knows he goes on about this, but let's be honest, what are people gonna maybe turn to? Possibly crypto and technology? Well, I don't know if everybody's that smart, but everything else is essentially a wealth trap. He says it will make you feel more in control if you own crypto, more able to deal with what's happening. Even if you can only afford a small amount, it will make a difference. Now over in the West, maybe we're not seeing it, but you are seeing this in these smaller countries. They are turning to Bitcoin. They are turning to cryptocurrencies because they cannot keep up with their insane inflation, right? Not to mention that we are having a lot of sort of, uh, you know, crypto adoption. Kraken has added PayPal as a deposit method to buy crypto on their platform. You can use PayPal balance, bank account, or payment cards. Coming over here, India, which is flip-flopping like a fish out of water, the finance minister has noted that a worldwide framework for regulati regulating crypto assets is underway. The state came on Tuesday where they emphasized the need for global cooperation in regulating cryptocurrencies. I mean, China coming out saying, you know, that they're essentially looking at it as property. And, you know, if you're into the altcoins right now, Solana had a bit of a pump and there was an announcement that said that Visa was expanding its stablecoin settlement services to the Solana blockchain currently in a pilot test. So I just don't understand with all of this that's going on right now, everything that's happening, you know, again, these analysts that have been calling for doom and gloom since the bottom, yes, a broken, a broken clock is, is, is right twice, you know, a day. But I mean, come on, guys, you're missing out on the entire move and, and the entire opportunity and, you know, coming over here and seeing that we're starting to heat up on these maps, starting to realize that these whales are loading up on Bitcoin, highest number of 10 Bitcoin ever. And they're saying that they don't think that this is BlackRock. They're saying that these are other entities that are trying to front run these ETFs, right? So that's basically what I just wanted to mention. And yeah, let me know what you guys think about below in the comments. Again, if we see something that is super bearish, if we see something that's a big red flag, we'll let you know. But right now, I'm just not seeing it, you know, unless I put this video out and then the price literally just like crashed is 20%. Okay, fine, fair enough. But as of right now, that's basically where we stand. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You're the reason that I make these videos again, we're, you know, we're not going like super ultimately bullish, but I am just saying lots of interest being lost, lots of negativity, you know, in the space right now. And I just feel like this overly bearishness, overly uh, negative sentiment is, is really not well justified. It seems like it's just a lot of guessing, hoping, trying to come up with reasons. And all of these guys that have been, again, just claiming that Bitcoin is going to keep falling lower and lower and lower. Well, we've held through the three arrows, the Terra Luna crash, the Celsius, the Voyager, uh, you know, the, the Fed raising rates, right? We, we, Bitcoin has held through all of that and yet we're still above $20,000. So I just find it very, very funny how sentiment can shift so quickly off of such really not that aggressive move. So let me know what you guys think below. Obviously, once structure gets broken, if we do have something that does jump out at us, then I will let you know. But right now, it does look like we're out of that distribution phase. We could be into that accumulation phase. So that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much. Again, if you do want to learn how to trade, check out these tutorials popping up right here, right now. And if you guys do want to trade, make sure that you take advantage of the coin catch bonus below. There's over $10,000. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.